If you are here because you're looking for ways on how not to make an epic fail with your luxury purchases, then keep watching because I've got some tips that work every time. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. For most of us, when we buy something that has this sort of price tag, it's a considered purchase. It's something you really think about and no one wants to go and buy something that in a few months time ends up just being a complete non-starter. So I'm gonna share with you my criteria. These are the things that I always sort of run through in my head. Does the brand in question tend to end up in sales and in outlet stores? For example, in Harrods. Harrods do I think two, two or maybe four 10% off days a year. The brands who wouldn't be seen dead going into the 10% off sale are Chanel, Hermes, Dior, but the brands that always end up in it are Fendi, Givenchy, Balenciaga, Saleron. These sorts of brands always end up with 10% off their top line bags, but not only that, those brands also end up in outlet stores, and I've only got to think about Bista Village where you can pretty much walk into any of those boutiques there and be able to get things. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but we're talking here about buying something that is a classic investment piece. And so for me, if it goes in a sale and it's not an investment, the next question to ask yourself is, is the style, is it iconic? Has that style been around for at least two to three years, if not longer. I'm gonna use the Lady Dior as an example here. This particular bag has been around since, I think, 1995. The reason why this is so crucial is you need to imagine that if you ever choose to sell your item, you need to think of the item in terms of search traffic on Google. If this item is still being sold in shops in 10 years time, there's still gonna be people out there potentially looking for it. If it's not sold in shops in 10 years time, you're reliant on people that still want it from back in the day, that can remember the name of it and don't mind walking around in a bag that hasn't been seen for the last five years. Question three to ask yourself is, has the price increased in the last 12 months? If you take Chanel, for example, Chanel are notorious. They're always bunging the prices up by another 10%. I think, well, I guess there's no written rule to how many times a year they do it. I think in 2016, from memory, I think they did it twice. Although it's a bad thing when you come to buy the item because you're having to pay a stupid price for it, it's actually a good thing once you've got the item. Let's say, let's take this as an example. I bought this in 2015. I paid £2,400 for it. This bag is now just over 3000 Because the price has gone up since I last bought it, I'm pretty much guaranteed to at least get back on it the price that I spent. You need to consider the color, the material the item is in, and the size. Again, I'm gonna use this for comparison reasons because actually it answers all of those questions. Is this bag a classic because of the color I picked it in? No, I made a massive error there, but actually I bought this because I love it as opposed to necessarily wanting to be able to sell it. I think the best color to get this in would be a black. Now we talk about the material. You can get these bags in various different seasonal materials, but to me, the two classics are either patent or calfskin. Calfskin, I think, I feel is more mainstream. Again, if you're buying because you want to enjoy the bag, but at the end of the day, you might want to sell it, I think black in calfskin is probably going to be the best thing to go with. The reason why I didn't get calfskin is the calfskin scuffs up really easily. And also, particularly if you get it in a lighter color, hand oils absorb into the calfskin. If we take Chanel as another example, their two classic leathers tend to be the lambskin and the caviar. Again, you need to weigh up which one you think is gonna be better. Personally, whenever I look on secondhand retail sites, I feel like these are both pretty much up there in terms of people want them. But I think that they both go in waves. I feel like there have been points in time where I felt that the caviar sold over and above the lambskin because the lambskin is quite delicate, but then some people don't like the caviar. So I think both of these are good options to go with. But you know what I'm saying? If you're looking at this bag and it's in a seasonal fabric or it's in like some sort of unusual color or unusual leather, yeah, it could end up being something that you make money on. If that person in questions remember that it came in cerise pink in 2015 and they really want it and they're gonna go and look for it. But for most people, I think getting it in a classic Black with either the calfskin or the caviar is the best option. And then finally, size. I'm going back to the Lady Dior to demonstrate this. This particular bag comes in, when I bought this, it came in three sizes, the mini, this, which at the time was called the medium, and then there was the large. Personally, 
I think that at the time, the best size in terms of buying something that was gonna be iconic was this size. There's no like guaranteed rhyme or reason with it, just do your homework, have a look on secondhand websites. So I'm gonna show you now some examples of things that I've personally bought because I felt at the time that they were investment pieces. I.e. if I ever wanna sell it, I can, and I'll get goodish money for it. The first thing is this, it doesn't always have to be bags. This is a jacket, this is a blazer from Balmain. The cut and the style of this jacket, although they produce it in loads of different colours yearly and the colours are seasonal. This jacket is iconic in the mere fact that it's been around for so many years and they haven't tweaked the, the actual styling of it. I remember first seeing this jacket in, I think it was 2013, and I remember it was around about £920 at the time. It's now, it's now getting on for £1,300. Before I got this, when I was looking to get one possibly second hand. They're as much second hand as they blooming are to go to the shop and buy something new. Like there's not much in it. For the sake of saving a hundred pounds to buy someone's old jacket, I'd rather just spend that hundred pounds extra and get something that's box fresh. This is another example of something that I felt that I took a bit of a gamble on because the price of it was right. This is the Alma BB from Louis Vuitton. When I purchased this, this was 650 pounds. And I had someone the other day on here tell me that it's over 700 now. When I was looking to buy this at the time, every time I looked this item up on secondhand websites, um, those being eBay, and by the way, I only buy designer on eBay if there is a legitimate original receipt that comes with the item because you can't be too sure on eBay. But on eBay and Vesto Collective, whenever I was looking at these bags, they were over a thousand pounds. And yet at the time they were 650 to buy. I don't know why they were that sort of money. And I, there's a difference as well, like another thing to do when you're doing your homework on this, there's a difference between what people list an item for and what it actually sells for. Someone could put this up for like five grand, but that doesn't mean they're gonna get that for it. When you're looking, don't be like, oh my God, okay, this bag's on eBay for two grand, therefore I'm gonna go and buy it. Actually keep an eye on what the bags sell for. That will give you a good idea as to whether it's actually selling for that money. I also want to talk about this bag because I get loads of you who are starting your collections who ask me about whether you should go for this or the other one, which I actually do think is a classic for the reasons that I've mentioned, is the Speedy. So for example, I think the Speedy is a classic because the style of it's been around for, for like years. The price of it continues to go up. It's a bag that's constantly in demand. There's a lot of people that want that bag. I do think the size plays a part, like for example, a bit like what I was saying with the Lady Dior, if you're gonna get that and you wanna be able to resell it potentially in the future, I think you need to think about the size. I don't know too much about the size of it, but I feel like, is it the 25 or the 30? There's, a, there's like a much bigger one, which I don't feel like is as popular, but then equally there's a teeny tiny one that's not popular either. I think there's that sort of medium size in the middle there is probably gonna be best for you. Maybe it's not bags or clothes that you're looking at, maybe it's jewelry. Here's an example here brooches. If I want to buy something, enjoy it, wear it, but know that I can sell it and get more for it. Brooches and the earrings, probably even the necklaces from Chanel. I feel like for some reason, these bad boys hold their value. I swear to God, when I look these up on Vestair Collective and eBay, people want like five, 600 pounds for them and they sell for that price. And it, it's almost amazing because they don't cost anywhere near that in the shop. I mean, they can do if you get really embellished ones. But like, I think, was it that one? This was like 240 pounds. Still a lot of money. It's nowhere near like the fives or anything like that. So I feel like these are a really good entry point. And now, shoes. Shoes generally for me are not an investment piece because you wear them on your feet and they get trashed. But for some reason, Chanel shoes seem to sell well. I've got experience of this. They do sell well, even after you've worn them. I don't know why that is. Other brands like Jimmy Choo, Dior, other brands, I just can't get rid of things, even when they're new. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna show you two shoes from Chanel that I think are good items to buy if you maybe wanna sell them to get yourself something new. This is the first item. This is the Chanel Espadrille. Technically, everyone will tell you this is a classic item, and it is, particularly if you get it in a classic colorway. The reason why this doesn't win it for me is because the Chanel Espadrilles don't wear well. If you want to buy yourself a pair of shoes that you can actually wear and enjoy, 
and that maybe after a few wears or more god i've seen like chanel shoes on vest air collective that are really ready for the bin but they're selling for like 200 pounds or more but if you want to buy something that you can wear enjoy and then be able to sell i don't think these are it because first of all they're not the most comfy the sole doesn't give it's like walking on a brick so they're not terribly comfy but also they do not wear particularly well i've seen these for, on people that have got caught in the rain and all of the sacking has sort of expanded and come out of the shoe also the sole is very very thin and would wear very quickly this is a great shoe if you want to wear it sparingly on holiday on like vacation um like in a resort but it's not the sort of thing i made the mistake of wearing these once to go shopping and my feet were killing me at the end of the day there are two shoes from chanel that i think are classic you can wear them enjoy them they don't wear out really quickly the first one is the flat ballet pumps i actually had a pair that i sold just recently i wore those a few times but the shoe still looked in great condition when i decided to sell them so that was like a good thing because i could i still got some wear out of them and when i sold them the next person who got them still got a decent shoe other shoe that you could consider is the chanel slingback which last summer was just everywhere and i've got a feeling there was a point in time where i thought should i sell these shoes like at the end of the summer last year i thought should i sell them is the bubble gonna burst but actually i've already seen them in loads of like press publications for like this summer so i think they're an item that could end up being a bit like the espadrille like when the espadrille first came out i thought is this going to be a trend and then it sort of became a thing and then the next year it became a thing as well and it just sort of carried on from there and i think the same thing is going to be the case with the slingbacks so they are my personal tips when i want to buy a piece of luxury and i want to know that it's still going to be a wearable item or that if i want to sell it i can get good money back they're the things that i follow and so far touch wood it's always worked thank you for watching come and join me in the next video i'm going to link to it at the end you can click on either one and i'll see you in a few minutes